Hello, I'm Dr. Emil Matarees. I'm the director of the concussion program for Capital Institute for Neurosciences. Today we're going to talk about concussion. This is a condition that's been known for thousands of years, but even today is still frequently misunderstood. All of us should know the signs of concussion because if somebody has a concussion and proper actions are not taken and certain precautions put in place, it could result in permanent and irreversible brain damage. I hope you all will join me in discussing this in our series. Thank you. You may be wondering, what exactly is a concussion? It is actually a chemical change in the brain. It's an injury that causes individual neurons, brain cells, to temporarily malfunction. How does it happen? Well, the brain is not actually attached inside the skull. The brain is sitting at the base of the skull with a sack of fluid around it, spinal fluid that insulates the brain. Any kind of impact directly to the skull or any indirect impact where the head is shifted like a whiplash injury, the brain shifts. And inside that skull, the way it shifts, it strikes the interior of the skull and that area of impact becomes momentarily stunned. Electrical changes occur where that nerve is no longer carrying current. And whatever that nerve does, it temporarily malfunctions. And it can present in many different ways, symptoms of concussion. We're gonna talk about those later. It is not a bruise on the surface of the brain. There is no bleeding or, or big areas of swelling on the brain. If you get a CAT scan or an MRI, it's not gonna show anything. In fact, we, we, we try our best to dissuade uh, parents bringing their children to the hospital who may have a concussion, who insist on getting a CAT scan because we're exposing these kids to unnecessary radiation. It's a diagnosis based on clinical history and physical examination. These nerves will heal, they'll heal on their own. They take time, but it is something that rest oftentimes alone will control. Uh, these neurons that are malfunctioning will slowly come back in time, uh, and some areas will recover very quickly. Most individuals, 80%, within the first three weeks will fully recover. However, there are 20% of people who can go on for up to three months or even up to a year with symptoms. So it's important to make the diagnosis, get the kind of evaluation and treatment that you need to try to hasten recovery and prevent further injury until full recovery occurs. So let's get to it. The concussion symptoms that most people will experience are headaches, dizziness, lightheadedness, fatigue, sensitivity to light, and sensitivity to the sound. I think most people would expect those kind of symptoms. They pick up on those. But what I find most individuals are not aware of are the cognitive problems especially in students that are in school. They have trouble focusing and concentrating. Uh, it makes them have great difficulty understanding what the teacher is saying, following the lectures, uh, doing the homework. Uh, they have great difficulty taking notes. Uh, oftentimes, because of the sensitivity to light and uh, frequent dizziness, these same children have trouble uh, reading using a computer because the computer has them reading. Uh, it's sensitive to light because of the background light. Uh, they have to quickly move their eyes and their eyes may be out of alignment or there may be dizziness that they're experiencing because of rapid head or eye movements. What I think most people have never recognized as part of concussion, I don't know if you can guess this one, depression anxiety, mood swings, irritability, short temper, increased suicide ideations. Yeah, we see increased suicides in, in kids that have had concussions. It's, it's a topic no one wants to talk about, but it's one that's very serious. You need to ask you know, somebody who you think had a concussion, not just, 
Are they tired? Are they sleeping? Are they able to recall their, their classwork? But how are they feeling? Not only physically feeling, how are they feeling mood-wise? And there's therapy for all of these. You know what else? Eye movements. One of the most common things we see is people having trouble focusing. They can't see clearly. They think they need new lenses or there must be something in their eyes or things are shifting around them. Uh, their, their vision can go in and out of focus uh, and it could really interfere with someone's work, you know, working on the computer, trying to read, do calculations. So there's many different things that you wouldn't necessarily think of as being concussion. Many times concussion symptoms can happen right away. If you get hit or knocked down, you can have stars that you see, blurred vision, you can have vertigo with the rim spinning, you can get up and feel drunk. All the things you'd expect somebody who's drunk can be signs of concussion. Trouble focusing their vision, poor coordination, poor balance. But it's important to know that many of these concussions may not show up for another 24 hours. So keep an eye out. You see something different in that person, especially young children who can't describe their symptoms. Let's get evaluated by someone who knows how to treat a concussion. Second impact syndrome is the most serious potential consequence after someone has had a concussion. It can result in permanent and irreversible serious deficits, physical deficits, paralysis, permanent brain injury, intellectual impairment, and death. To make it even more serious, it affects our younger population, individuals whose brains have not fully developed. So children, adolescents, young adults, up to around age 23 in most cases, some even a little older, while the brain has not fully developed when it's still immature, it is vulnerable for this catastrophic occurrence. It is a condition that occurs when an individual who has suffered a concussion and is still symptomatic gets re-injured. They get a second impact, a second concussion, and neither needs to be a serious concussion. It could be a minor head bang, an elbow, you know, a, a thrusting of the body, and within minutes, a series of events occurs in the brain that causes sudden and irreversible swelling, increased pressure in the brain, and it can cause death. It is not something that can be stopped even if it was occurring in the emergency room. Most individuals fortunately do not die from it, but they are left with permanent damage. And this is a real condition. This is something I unfortunately see in my practice and is the one thing I think everyone who has children, anyone who has adolescents and all young adults who participate in any kind of sports activity need to recognize if you have a concussion, take this seriously. Because if you think that a concussion is nothing and you go out and you play sports and you get re-injured, it could be the end of your life. It could be the end of your career. It can prevent you from going on to, to college, to becoming a professional, to getting that scholarship, to doing those, those things that you work so hard all your life to achieve or you want your child to achieve. So take it seriously. If you take nothing else away from this presentation, recognize that there is this tremendously serious risk if a second concussion occurs before the first fully recovers, you can save someone's life by insisting they not participate in sports, do everything they possibly can to avoid re-injury. Also, if you're an athlete and you know one of your colleagues, especially somebody who's really good on the team, had a concussion, don't let them hide it. Be a friend, you're not a rat, you're not out there you know, telling on them that they had a concussion. You could be potentially saving their life. And this is something you should share with your other friends and colleagues, uh, especially with young people. If there's a chance you had a concussion, don't take that chance with your brain. Save a life. Do the right thing.
I can talk about concussions for a long time, and I think it's important to know a lot of the details, but it's also hugely important to hear from somebody who's actually suffered the consequences of a concussion and multiple concussions. I want to introduce you to a young gentleman who has been a patient of mine for about seven years. He's had multiple concussions and has truly experienced what we've talked about as signs of concussion, uh, the symptoms that he's endured, and the success he's made with therapy. Let me introduce you to my friend and prior patient, now that he's too healthy to see me, Grant. Hello, everybody. My name is Grant Schwartz, and concussions changed my life. I suffered my first concussion and athletic accident about seven years ago when I was just 13 years old. And I must admit, I did re-injure myself quite a few times after that, whether it be through simple accidents, more athletic accidents, car accidents. Concussion can happen anywhere. What I want to focus on today is how concussions changed my life, how concussions changed Grant. What was hardest for me was knowing that everybody around me could tell that there was something different after each concussion. They were losing the vibrant, bright, go-getter, smart, athletic Grant, and they were finding a different person. Now, years later, when I look back, I know that this different person was the side effects of concussion. After my first concussion, people doubted me. You know, they said, you didn't hit your head. What do you mean you have a concussion? You don't, you don't need to stop practicing. You don't need to not take that test. I was very fortunate to find Dr. Matteris. I was very, very smart to get evaluated by a proper physician. This is what helped me start my journey of healing. Now, Dr. Matteris helped me with the first one, whether it just be a doctor's note to my school or it be telling me I needed to rest. But there was a lot I had to do on my own. After subsequent concussions, things got a lot harder. Like I said, I began to change. My mental health started to decline rapidly. I started to make horrible choices I never would have made before. Things that I still live with and regret to this day. But you don't have to go through that. If you just let yourself not be okay and admit to yourself that Concussion can change you. I didn't just have headaches and fatigue and a little bit of dizziness. I didn't just need to stay in bed for three days. No, I, I, I needed to completely change my mentality on life. I, I needed to grow up, honestly. And if I didn't have the proper help of Dr. Matteris, a supporting family and loving friends, I don't know if I'd be here today. So what I ask of you is if you feel any symptom, and I don't just mean a headache, I mean if, if you feel more anxious, if, if you just don't feel like yourself, think maybe, you know, when I tripped down the steps the other day, I could have suffered a head injury. Can happen anywhere. Pay attention to how you feel. Pay attention to what others say about the way you're acting. Get the help you need. There's so many resources available for people who have suffered concussions so that you don't have to go through everything that I did. Thank you. There are so many misconceptions as to what should be done for somebody who's had a concussion and how to treat it. I think one of the oldest myths is that somebody who's had a concussion should be put into a dark room and kept there for a week or two, told not to go to school, not to use technical devices, not to try to study and have their, their meals brought to them. That old cocoon thought of, of healing is, is archaic. We want somebody who's had a concussion to be evaluated by somebody who's a professional and knows how to evaluate a concussion, how to treat it. For each individual concussion, specific treatment regimen should be established. Most individuals will recover 
within a matter of days. 80% will fully recover you know, within three weeks. But we need an initial phase of rest that could be one to three days for most individuals. Keeping them in a dark, isolated location can delay their recovery, can prolong their symptoms, as well as increase anxiety and depression for students that are fearful of falling too far behind in their academics. By having somebody evaluated early by a concussion specialist or other physician or healthcare provider that's trained in evaluating concussions, we can specifically identify an individual's problems and get the right therapy. Yes, there are therapies for concussion. There's physical therapy to help individuals who have trouble with pain, uh, imbalance, coordination. There is eye therapies to let their eye movements return to normal more quickly. There are uh, therapies to help uh, their mood, to improve their, their thinking. And we want these students, especially back in school quickly. So having accommodations established for their specific needs is important. Each individual will tell you what their problems are and by examining them, we'll be able to see it and then request a series of specific accommodations that will help a student return to school quickly, learn, even if it's passive learning, sitting there and listening, rather than being at home, worrying about how much work is piling up and how much more they have to worry about. A student's most important job is getting back to school. It's important for them to get back to sports, but not until their academic is 100% back to normal and they are symptom free. Then we could start a return to play process working in hand and hand with their athletic trainer and their nursing staff to return them to full activities. Also, I think it's important to understand that not everything in school needs to be made up. Uh, we should be able to work with the administration and the nursing department of the schools to try to minimize what the student might need. So getting them evaluated, getting them the therapy they need, getting them the accommodations will decrease their stress, hasten their recovery, and shorten the duration of their symptoms. In addition to everything else we talked about today, there are three main takeaway points that I want you to be sure and remember. If you see someone who may have had a concussion, pull them out of harm's way until they're evaluated and they are cleared before they're allowed to get back on the field. Two, be sure you're evaluated by a physician or a healthcare provider who is specially trained in concussions and knows how best to arrange their continued uh, care and hasten their recovery. And three, remember second impact syndrome. If someone's had a concussion, absolutely prevent them from getting back on the field or doing any high risk behavior where they could be re-injured. You could be saving their lives. You could be changing their life for the good by preventing further injury. We all should have a healthy life. Enjoy sports. It's important for all of us, but let's do it right. Thank you.